Okay, and our last example for this section is going to be um, a piecewise linear problem. So students tend to have a lot of trouble with this. Um, so I'd really like you all to pay attention and, and make sure you take in all the details here. But we're going to be trying to solve um, this initial value problem, dy dx. Oops. It's going to already be given in standard form. Plus y is equal to f of x. Uh, for initial condition y of 0 equals 0. For a piecewise function f, where f of x takes on value 1 when x is between 0 and 1, and 0 when x is bigger than 1. Uh, and so this piecewise part looks weird, but we definitely have a linear equation, so we could go ahead and jump right in and at least start dealing with that. Um, so we know that our p is 1. So our integral of p of x dx is going to be integral of 1 dx is just x. And so our e to integral p of x dx is just e to x. So even if I don't know what I'm going to do about f yet, I can at least plug this in and start rearranging my ODE. So our ODE is going to become, um, eventually, um, sort of that we have e to x times dy dx plus y equals e to x times f, and we rearrange that left side and end up with that d e to x y, and on the right just that e to x times f. And so we'd go ahead and want to integrate this, except that, um, you know, the left-hand side is easy like it always is. That becomes e to x y, great, but the right-hand side presents a problem. Um, I'm going to have to integrate a piecewise function. And my experience has been that this is very difficult for people. <coughs> so let's go ahead and think about what this function looks like and what integrating it is going to do. Um, so our function looks like this. So here's x, here's f. And from 0 to 1, it's up here at 1. And from 1 on, it's down here at 0. Just like that. Um, and so if I'm just thinking about if I knew I was solving this problem when x is less than 1, then integral e to x times f dx is in this area. Um, so I'm going to get just that I'm integrating e to x times 1 dx or e to x plus c. And it's a really simple problem. Um, but if x crosses 1, it starts to become more difficult. So f takes on different values at different values x, which means it needs to have different integrals for different values x. So um, I'm going to think about that I'm trying to go from whatever initial value I have to some generic x. You can do this with constants. Um, you just need to like be very careful when you're solving for your unknown constants. Um, and I think it's easier to set it up this way. That's why I'm going to show it this way. But in class, I'm happy to work with you on the constant way. So the reason I like the definite integrals is because I definitely know that from 0 to 1, my um, f value is 1. I need to give myself a bit more room. It didn't work out like I thought it would. And then if I want to pass 1 and go to any other value x, that I'm going to have e to x times f is 0 dx. And if you wanted to go ahead and put um, placeholder variables s right here, that would be okay too. 
it's the same thing. It maybe is a little bit easier for you to see, although it actually ends up not mattering in just this one case because it's, it's integrating zero. Um, so if we evaluate this integral, um, and real quick, I just want to show you uh, what, what kind of marking can I use? Maybe like a wavy line. Um, we learned that wavy lines are bad if I do them too fast. Okay, so this first integral is representing that rectangle box um, where f is 1 still. That's why it goes only up until x is 1. It only lasts that long. But then after x is 1, this integral is representing the part that's that wavy line. Um, and that can go on for however many values x you have. And so um, when we evaluate these integrals, we're going to get that the first one is just um, integral of e to x is just e to x. Sorry, I had a moment. Um, and we're evaluating that for x that goes from 0 to 1. And then this one is um, 0. And so that integral would just be 0. Um, since we're kind of taking it to a generic x, um, we can think about this as a um, indefinite integral, there could be some constant that comes out of this. Um, if you didn't put that constant there, it could show up later in the problem. You know, you'll, you'll still be fine, but putting a constant whenever a zero comes out of an integral is good, just to make sure that you don't have to remind yourself to do it later. So I'm gonna throw a constant down right now. Um, and so what I end up getting is that this is e to 1 minus e to 0 plus some unknown constant. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, I used c for the previous part, so let's use k here. So at this point, I've integrated both, both parts of the piecewise equation. And then we also need to solve for initial conditions. So um, for 0 less than or equal to x less than 1, we had um, e to x y is equal to e to x plus c. Um, which means that y is equal to 1 plus c e to minus x. And then uh, our initial condition was given as y of 0 equals 0. So we'd go ahead and just plug in 0 is equal to um, 1 plus c e to 0, or 1 plus c. So we've got c is equal to minus 1, and y is equal to 1 minus e to minus x. Um, so we've got that solution. And then for x greater than 1, We've got e to x y is equal to that um, e to 1 minus 1 plus k. So where we took that definite integral from 0 to 1, and we went ahead and held on to this unknown constant for that integral that was 0 going up to some unknown value x. <coughs> um, so in this case, y is e to 1 e to minus x minus 1 e to minus x plus k e to minus x. And if you wanted to do like algebraic simplification, remember you add together exponents that multiply each other. Um, so that's going to become e to 1 minus x minus e to minus x plus k e to minus x. Um, so the piecewise solution is going to have two parts. Um, 
y is originally 1 minus e to minus x, as long as 0 is less than or equal to x less than 1. But then after you pass 1, you have the solution e1 to minus x minus e to minus x plus k e to minus x. And I just want to note that piecewise ODEs have piecewise solutions. So if you have a piecewise problem and you don't have a piecewise solution, that's like a sign to you that something went wrong. Um, another sign that something went wrong is that we still have an unknown variable in this problem, even though we started with initial conditions. So you really got to be careful. Um, Kind of a hidden condition in this problem is that behavior on either side of the break in the function at x equal 1 um, is important and needs to match. For both of the um, parts of the piecewise solution. And so we can go ahead and use um, that requirement to solve for our unknown k. So we're just going to go ahead and say, OK, I know that y is equal to 1 minus e to minus x and e to 1 minus x plus k minus 1 e to minus x. But then at x equals 1, they really should match. So I'm going to just plug in that value. And for the first part, I get 1 minus e to minus 1. And then on the bottom, I get e to 1 minus 1 plus k minus 1 e to minus 1, which is e to 0 plus k minus 1 e to minus 1, um, which is 1 plus k minus 1 e to minus 1, because e to 0 is 1. <coughs> And so if I want these to be the same, I need um, k to be equal to 0 um, to have the same value. So when I go back to my equation, I actually can just sort of like cross out that part write in 0, whatever you want. Um, or you can rewrite it if it bothers you to have it um, like scribbled on your paper. I'll do that even. So the solution is actually 1 minus e to minus x for x up until 1, and then e to 1 minus x minus e to minus x for x greater than or equal to 1. And so the takeaway from this last part is just that if you have unknown constants left in your answer, you can resolve it by setting your functions equal on both sides. We're going to set in this case, y of 1 equal y of 1, but if the function changed at a different value, you would use that value instead. And then we have an equation that lets us solve for the constant. It's sort of like an initial condition for the second part of your piecewise function. Um, I know that example was really long, and I'm sorry about it. It's, it's a tough problem. I'm happy to work through more examples of it for you all, um, but this really is a type of problem that I want you to be able to solve. So if you need to go back and kind of review your notes, I definitely recommend it. And then please talk to me in class if, if this is kind of confusing, because it is for a lot of people. <laughs>